Have you been just in this place of feeling really good for a while and then you go out and you start hanging out with people and things seem to be going pretty well, but then after a little bit, it starts to kind of shift and some of the stuff that had never been on your mind or things that maybe past memories start to resurface and you find yourself in this place of just feeling kind of stuck or feeling kind of tense or feeling irritated or feeling nervous or feeling angry. And you wonder, what is that? What is that all about? And it's not until you come back home and you get time to just be with yourself again, you're able to finally equalize and get back into some sort of sense of peace. What is that all about? Well, it's a thing about energy and it's a thing about consciousness. And it's a thing about a story that I recently wrote that I'm going to share with you and then dive deeper into. So if you're curious about what it is I'm talking about, and how we can stay in a more equalized state, even when we're around all kinds of different people. Come on, my friend, let's dig into the soil of this together. Welcome back to you. My name is D. Grant Smith. I'm the growth farmer for personal development through the lens of spirituality and storytelling. And storytelling is gonna be a big part of what it is that we talk about today. As you know, consciousness is reality. Conscious awareness is part of our ongoing growth process as souls living a human experience. And before we dig deeper into this subject, I want to make a little request of you. If you enjoy this kind of content and you enjoy what it is that I do here, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps get this video and these messages that I share out to more people. And also it helps me know that what I'm doing and what I'm saying here is connecting and resonating with you. And if at any point during this video, what I say resonates with you, drop down into the comments and let me know. Tell me how it resonates with you and uh, what it is that you're gaining from this experience. And I will meet you and your energy in this place. I appreciate you. Energy is what it is that we're really talking about today because oftentimes when we are by ourselves, we are mostly at peace. Sometimes we're not very at peace if we're too in our heads when we're alone. And hey, I can totally understand if that's something that you have had some issues with, because I've had issues with that too. Spent a lot of time in my head and trying to figure out all kinds of stuff that doesn't make any sense. And I will look at what's going on in my outer reality and then I would make all these judgments about myself or against myself based on that, letting what I was seeing be the influence to determine who I really am. And that's the backwards way to go about it. The way that it really works is we decide who it is that we want to be and we feel into that and we choose to align our consciousness with that state and that's what brings about the life that we desire. That's how consciousness creates reality. Want more insight into what that looks like on a scientific and spiritual and other basis? I encourage you to check out the works of Neville Goddard, Eckhart Tolle, and um, Joe Dispenza amongst countless many great teachers in this. But here's the reality. When we spend too much time outside of our inside, outside of our heart space, outside of connecting with our soul, whether we're spending too much time in our mind, which can be easily influenced by all sorts of things, or we're spending too much time outside of ourselves and out in the world, it is really easy for us to get influenced by not just the thoughts and the attitudes and the behaviors of the outside world, but all of these energies that are intermingling and now coming into our energy and changing our energetic state. And if we're not aware of the energies of other people, we can absorb those energies and then it can feel like that is our energy, which it's not. But here's where we can come into a greater understanding of the importance of being within ourselves. I wrote this story a few days ago, first short story that I've written in several months, and it pertains exactly to this, and that's why I wanted to share it with you here. It's a story that I've titled The Outside, and here it is. You can only hold your conscious breath for so long before you have to breathe in. 
And when you do, the atmosphere can affect you. There are different energies flowing all around, intermingling with each other, influencing each other, transmuting and converting into various forms. When the same types of energies are fluctuating in one place, it amplifies and expands. You get enough people in the same place who are on these wavelengths and their energetic influence widens and takes over. On a good note, this is a blessing. But when you have negative energy, this is how pollution of the mind takes place. And that is why it is advised that you not leave your structure for more than a day at most before coming back inside. The outside can kill you if you're not careful. Because the outside will take the life that you have held on to so strongly within and make it dissolve before your very eyes. You won't be able to see the light and glory that you once did. You will be poisoned with a different kind of viewpoint, one that sees only darkness, chaos, and loss. It's easy to fall back asleep and become one of the walking dead in this state. Succumb to the indoctrination of those who have continuously poisoned the streams of collective consciousness with fear in different strands and strains. The economy is doomed. Sell what you have and get out of the market. Prices are rising and it's all because of the policies of the current political power. There aren't jobs for people anymore and it's impossible to find work. There aren't people who actually want to work anymore. Everyone just wants a handout. All men are players and just want sex. All women are hoes and just want money. I can never get ahead, no matter how hard I try. Rich people are corrupt and greedy and just keep taking from the good, hard-working people. Those illegals are destroying our country with their drugs and violence. The only way to stop it is to build a fence and get a gun to protect ourselves. That's just a small dose. Reading the news media's reports on what is going on in the world and breathing in this kind of energy is how we destroy ourselves. It takes root inside your structure, the structure of you, and grows thick, needled, thorny vines that stretch everywhere and take over. The poisons of these thorny briars can kill your hopes and dreams, making you give up on your inherent divine power to create magic and turn the unwanted things of the world into priceless gold. That's why spending time inside your structure is essential for a happy, peaceful, and prosperous life. Going within and tuning out everything from the outside world is where you harmonize yourself with the endless, infinite, and abundant source of all of life. Through this connection, creation happens. This creation sends out a different kind of frequency, one of love, harmony, peace, and abundance. It reshapes the outside and converts it into the image of what has taken place on the inside of your structure. However, since the outside is malleable and shapeable, it can be reshaped innumerable times. And depending on the person who is perceiving it, the outside can look completely different by different people who might be looking at the exact same thing or the exact same person. It all depends on the nature of the energy that is going on inside their personal inner structure. Here's another way of looking at it. From the outside looking in, the structure might seem to be a small one-story home. Inside this home there is warmth in the winter and cool in the summer. There is sustenance, peace, happiness, harmony, provision, and endless love. Laughter and delight echo throughout the home and joy is expressed continuously throughout the day, along with gratitude, praise, and delight. It's everything that anyone could want to experience. This home sits in a peaceful, pleasant neighborhood. The home has a nice, well-kempt lawn. The streets are quiet and the neighbors get along with each other. People are friendly and cordial most of the time. Zoom out even further and everything continues to seem quite normal and tranquil until you get to the edge of the city. Off in the distance, there are mountains, then the ocean. But further out is the massive endless dust storm. It is the expanse. Inside it are hurricanes, 
tornadoes, tsunamis, and other destructive forces that wreak havoc on everything it comes in contact with. Sometimes the storms come in over the oceans and into the mountains, venturing deeper into the cities and neighborhoods. You can't always see these storms based solely on your sense of sight or sound, but you can feel it. The energy changes dramatically when the storms blow in. You find yourself thinking completely different thoughts, feeling completely different ways. Hope gets sucked out. Loss and fear takes over, and the downward spiral continues. If you are on the outside of your home structure, when these storms come in, you can get swept up in them and be lost for a long time, surrounded by chaos and confusion. People you know stop acting like themselves when they are impacted by the storms of the expanse. They show up as your worst fears, cold, aggressive, hurtful. When you're stuck in the tumultuous conditions of the expanse, you change too. You go back into your old patterns, people-pleasing, demanding, insecure. You chase acceptance and approval wherever you can find it, trying to prove your worth and your value. There isn't ease and flow in the expanse. There isn't grace and peace. There isn't prosperity and abundance. There's only fear in all of its destructive forms. Struggle and difficulty pervades. If you choose to remain in the outside world and let it influence how you see yourself and everything else, you become one of the walking dead, a casualty of the expanse. It continues to try to suck the lifeblood out of creation. You can try to fight against the expanse using every tool in your arsenal, and you might survive for a while, but the only way to save yourself is to escape the expanse and return home to your home structure, the one inside of you. You take your home structure with you everywhere. It is not a physical structure. It is the one within your mind and your heart. When you find your way back to your home and to yourself and the inner confines of your source, you will find safety and restoration. Peace abounds here along with overflowing love and abundance. You can discover the infiniteness of the universe within your structure that is far more glorious and radiant and amazing than anything in the outside world. It's inside where you recreate the outside world and push the expanse further and further away. It's here where you change the world, and it starts by breathing in the energies of your soul and the energies of the divine. This is the energy of life to the fullest. And it's from this place that you can go back to the outside and into the world that you know and experience the transmutation of existence from chaos into peace, from strife into simplicity, from struggle into ease, from poverty into prosperity, from loss into gain, and from fear into love. Commit to your inner structure. Commit to you. Commit to your inner garden. This is your true home and where the power that changes the world resides when you call upon the divine through love because the kingdom of heaven is within. Once again, that's a short story that I recently wrote called The Outside. And one of the things that I do here on this channel and one of the things I do in a greater expanse on the growth farming platform is share stories that I've written that contain these kinds of spiritual insights, personal development jewels, and nuggets for your continued growth. And if you would like to be a part of what it is that I'm doing, and if you'd like to join into and get a more expansive exploration of these kinds of spiritual teachings, then I invite you to become a member at growthfarming.com. There you'll find all of my short novels, and I'm adding more on a regular basis, and deep dive teachings into what these stories communicate, and ways to use the stories and the wisdom inside of them to transform your own life. As you learn from this story, and as I illustrated through the story, when we spend too much time outside of ourselves, 
When we spend too much time outside in the world, it's easy for the world to influence the ways that we think. It's easy for all of these opposite viewpoints of our divinity and all of these ways of struggle and hardship and difficulty and loss and pain to take over our consciousness because we're breathing in that energy. We're absorbing that whether we're aware of it or not. And that's why it's always important for us to be aware of the energies that we're hanging out with as well as do our necessary inner work to make sure that our thought patterns are staying consistent with our ideal state. To make sure that what it is that's going on in our minds are not being influenced by what we're seeing on the outside. The outside is a reflection of something that's going on inside of us, sure. But we don't have to per personalize that. If we see something in our outside world that we don't like, we don't have to accept that as true. There's all kinds of great tools and resources to use, including revision, affirmations, ho'oponopono, one of my favorites energy clearing, energy release, all kinds of stuff. If we choose to believe something that is outside of us, that is not harmonious with the way that we want to be and who it is that we desire to be for ourselves and the life that we want to experience, it's our responsibility and our prerogative to go within ourselves and do the necessary inner work in our inner garden to either remove weeds that we don't want there and to continuously to plant and water the love that is within. That's how the tree of life grows out from us. And that's how we shift into higher and higher states of consciousness. Once again, this is a practice and a principle that I call growth farming. Growing love from within to produce love, abundance, success, joy, happiness, and wishes fulfilled without. What did you think about this story? How did it resonate with you? drop down and let me know in the comments below and get more from me once again by joining in and becoming a member at growthfarming.com. I am releasing new books, both nonfiction and fiction on a regular basis to bless, inspire, edify, encourage, and also entertain you a little bit in your own personal and spiritual growth and development journey. There's also a variety of courses and deep dive lessons and all kinds of awesome stuff Check it out and join in with me at growthfarming.com. I appreciate you. I love you. And I'll see you again soon.